Jesus has set you free. That's a wonderful news this morning. Jesus has set us free on Calvary. Hallelujah. But are you still free? You have to stay free. In Galatians, and I'm just going to read this quickly, uh, and then we're going to pray together this morning. Thank you for being with me. And as you can see, I'm still in a different location. Uh, but praise the name of Jesus, the Lord. The Lord's word can go forth anywhere. And it says in Galatians 5.1 that Jesus, in this freedom that Christ has set us free, stand firm. And do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. In other translations, it says, do not go back into the yoke of bondage. You know, many people are set free when they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but they don't stay free. They go back, they're burdened down, they're stressed out, uh, they're back into their old habits. And so today's message is freedom cost. It will cost you something to stay free. And Jesus wants to use every single one of us. And so we must be free in order to be able to, to be used of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And it says here that we are not to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You know, bondage will shut off the, the Spirit and the power of the Spirit. We want to operate in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. You know, there's a little chorus that goes like this. It says, set free to worship. I'm set free to praise Him. I'm set free to rejoice around God's throne. Oh, I'll shout, I'll dance, I'll sing it. Oh, hallelujah. Because we are set free, we can rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. You know, in Luke 14, Jesus told his disciples, he said, if you're going to build a tower, then you need to estimate the cost before you start building so that you know that you have enough to finish. You know, this, these are some, some things that people do not think about when they become a Christian, that there are some costs involved for them to walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, be led by the Spirit. All of those things will cost you something. Hallelujah. And we want to finish our course. We want to finish the spiritual house that God is building within us. And so let's talk about these costs for a few moments. The, the first cost is your thoughts. Your thought life needs to line up with the thought life of God. You know, Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, think on these things. Hallelujah. If you want to go forward, if you want to stay free from bondage, uh, free from stress, free from worry, free from uh, sorrow, then you, you need to line up your thoughts with God's thoughts. God thinks victory. God thinks overcoming. God thinks finishing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He thinks about things that are pure and holy and of good report. But some of you have been thinking other thoughts. You've been thinking the thoughts that the doctor has given you. You've been thinking the thoughts of, of one of your relatives has, has given you. You've been thinking thoughts that you've seen on TV. Let me tell you something. This is the first thing we're going to have to align our thoughts with the thoughts of God. Hallelujah. If you want to stay free. Do you want to stay free today? I want to stay free. I want to stay free from all 
encumberment. Some of you are so busy. Busy, busy, busy. You're a Martha, not a Mary. I want to be a Mary. I want to sit at his feet. I want to hear the word of God. Hallelujah. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. I want to fulfill my purpose and my destiny. Is that where you are? Freedom will cost you something. Father, right now we pray that this word will go forth with power and boldness. In the name of Jesus, I, I bind up any hindering force, any force that would try to come and keep this word from going into the hearts of the people. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit uh, just beginning to move right now. Let your presence be known to all that are viewing this video. In the name of Jesus, now and any day to come, that they will feel your presence. They will feel your power. They will feel the fire of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Well, that's the first cost, is your thoughts have to be given over to his thoughts. And the next thing is that your body, your body must be yielded to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You know, it says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we need to keep it clean. We need to keep it pure, uh, free from toxins. You know, this is not my message today, but I do feel like there are some people that you have paid, you've been spent too much time with toxic people. And when I say toxic, I'm talking about poison. I'm talking about those that, that bring um, uh, anger up in you, those that bring uh, distress up in you, those that, that irritate you, those that that keep you from believing the word of God. All of that is toxic. Our temple needs to be kept pure and holy because it houses the Holy Spirit. And then Romans 12, 1 says, present your, your body a living sacrifice. Present your bodies every single day to the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I just got up and I don't feel so well. Well, then present your body. Present your body to the Lord. Hallelujah. I present my body today uh, to the Lord. How praise the name of Jesus that I will do his will. I will do his purpose. Can you say it with me? Hallelujah. I present my body to the Lord today. That cost. That's a cost. Hallelujah. Number three on the list is your finances. Oh, well, I need to I need to hoard up. I need, you know, for a rainy day. I need to keep this to myself uh, because I might need it. When I get to be such and such an age, I might need it. You know, the Lord says, give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall he give back to you? So let's hand over our finances to the Lord. Amen. Let's be givers. Let's wherever he tells us to plant, wherever he tells us to sow our finances, let's be obedient to the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four on the list is we have to give our will over. Did you know you have a will? And God will not go against your will. You have a will. You're not just a robot where well, there, there's a string on the top of your head and God can, can move it around as, as he pleases. No, you have a will. You have a will. Just like Jesus had a will. He could have decided not to go to the cross. Did you know that? He could have called 10,000, a legion of angels to come and deliver him. And he, he wouldn't, he could have decided that way. But no, it was going to cost him something. It cost Jesus every single thing, every drop of blood, every part of him he gave to the Father. 
You know, it says in Luke 22, 42, this is when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. He says, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but your will be done. The Father's will be done. Have you said that to him? Oh, Father, I want your will to be done in my life today. Hallelujah. Or have you? do you have your list? Do you have your schedule? Do you have your structure? And this is what I'm going to do. Hallelujah. Or have you left yourself? Have you said, Lord, I've been giving my will to you. Do with me as you will. This day, in the name of Jesus. Number five on my list. Hope you're keeping up with me today. Hallelujah. Remember, you've been set free at Calvary, but to stay free, it's going to cost you something. Hallelujah. Number five on the list is, is your plans and your goals. Let's go over to Psalms 37. It says in Psalms 37, verses 4 and 5. Let's read together. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. But see, that's, a, that's the most important part of that, that sentence right there is, take delight in the Lord. Are you praising him? Are you worshiping him? Are you thinking about him this day? Are you thinking about what you need to get done, your goals, your plans? But it says, take delight in Him. Think about Him. Think about what He wants out of you today. Hallelujah. And He will give you the desires of your heart. And then let's go on to verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will do this. Hallelujah. He will bring His will to pass in your life, but it's going to cost you something. Lay down your agenda and pick up his. Jesus said it. If you lose your life, you will gain my life. Hallelujah. You know, I think about my life before Jesus and I don't want to go back there. There was nothing there that was, that was good. There was nothing there that was profitable. And I think about this little chorus. Something beautiful. Something good in all my confusion, God understood all I had to offer him was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful out of my life. Do you want him to make something beautiful out of your life? Do you want him to make something worthwhile out of your life? Something that will profit the kingdom? Hallelujah. He will do that if you will just take delight in him. If you will commit your way unto him. If you will pay the cost this day. And I sense in my spirit that there are some people right now, I see you crying. I see you saying, Lord, forgive me uh, for trying to do this myself. Hallelujah. I'm trying to do it in my own strength. Let me tell you something. The strength of the Lord is what will get you through. The strength of the Lord is what will keep you free. Hallelujah. Number six, of course, this is a big one. And that's your tongue. Give your tongue over to the Lord. Pay the price to keep your mouth shut. Hallelujah. King David said, put a guard over my mouth. Praise the name of Jesus. In Proverbs 18, 21, it says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. What are you speaking today? And this is not my, my total message, but I'm telling you right now, give up your tongue. Pay that price. 
to only speak the word of God. Jesus only spoke what he heard his father speak. And he only did what he saw his father do. Hallelujah. And that's what we're to do. There's many verses about the tongue. Read the whole book of James. It talks about it being a little member, but it being so powerful that it sets on fire. Hallelujah. In Matthew, it says, in Matthew 12, 37, it says that we are justified by the words that we speak or we're condemned by the words that we speak. So let's pay the cost to stay free. I want to be free today. Do you want to be free today? Free of any bondage, free of the government, free of any type of, of a financial bondage, any type of, of a physical bondage such as sickness, disease. Don't you want to be free of all of that today? Hallelujah. Number seven on my list, I'm bringing this to a close today, is the cost of your identity. Your identity needs to be in Christ Jesus. Let's turn to Galatians 2, verse 20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. You want to pay the cost? Then crucify yourself. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. Sherry White no longer lives. I don't have a Sherry White on this earth. Hallelujah. People may call me that, but that's not who I am. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise the name of Jesus. I don't even operate in my faith. I operate in his faith. And his faith. Brother Fred, help me. Hallelujah. What did his faith do? It raised the dead. It healed the lepers. It cast out devils. Praise the name of Jesus. He healed the blinded eyes. He healed the deaf, uh, the ears became open. Hallelujah. He healed the, the feeble knees. Praise the name of Jesus. What did Jesus do? He did the will of the Father. And the will of the Father is that he wants you free and he wants you whole. Hallelujah. Until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is coming back. I'm telling you people, he's coming back. Be ready. Praise the name of Jesus. Pay the cost to keep freedom in your life so that you can speak with freedom you can move with freedom you know jesus said know the truth and he said i am the way the truth and the life didn't he say that and he's inside of you and when you accepted him as lord and savior you became free but the world wants you to be in bondage your flesh wants to put you in bondage. Your thoughts want to put you in bondage. Now let's just go quickly over those seven, seven things that you need to pay for, hallelujah, that will cost you. Number one is your thoughts. Number two is your body. Number three is your finances. Number four is your will. Number five is your goals and your plans. Number six is your tongue. And number seven is your identity. Your identity needs to be in Christ Jesus. Remember, you have crucified yourself. Hallelujah. I believe it was Apostle Paul that said that, that he died daily. And how do you do that? How do you do all these things? How do you pay for all these things? Those seven things. I said freedom cost, but how do you pay for it? You want me to tell you? You pay for it through the Holy Spirit. 
the more you know the Holy Spirit and the more power that you have operating in your life, you're able to pay the cost. Hallelujah to Jesus. You're able to keep your tongue. You're able to give your finances. You're able to, to turn your thoughts over to the Lord. <clears throat> I need some water. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You're only able to do it by the Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. And I pray for you right now. I pray that you will want to stay free. And that you will pay any amount to stay free in Jesus' name. Free from any bondage. Right now, some of you are bound up with sickness in your body. You've been having difficulties with headaches. You've been having difficulties with muscle pain. You've been having difficulties with your knees. You've been having difficulties uh, with, your, with your ears. Uh, let me tell you something. Pay the cost. Get before the Holy Spirit and begin to pray in the Spirit. Pray in your prayer language. Build yourself up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Spirit. I'm telling you, you've got what it takes. You have what it takes to stay free. And it's the power of the Holy Spirit. I am a pusher. Brother Fred and I are pushers of the Holy Spirit. Because I know how it's changed my life. I know how he has delivered me from suicide. That spirit of suicide is a strong spirit, but in the name of Jesus, and I smell it with my smeller right now in Jesus' name, I come against that spirit of suicide, and I say, be gone in Jesus' name. That spirit of infirmity come out. In the name of Jesus. Because the enemy has tried to tell you, you just have to accept this. You know, Aunt Mary had it and Uncle Uncle George had it. And, and so it's just hereditary. And so I must have it too. People, that's a spirit of infirmity. And it keeps you in bondage. And I say, come out in the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you today. We lift you up and we say you are the great and mighty God. I say you are the one that keeps us out of bondage, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. He's my comforter, my Helper, on him I do believe. Hell, praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Cataracts are being removed right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hernias are being removed. I don't care where the hernia is. It's being removed right now by the, the laser light of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, breast tumors are being uh, removed right now in Jesus' name. Uh, two women from Africa right now. The Lord is healing you of HIV, uh, of AIDS right now in Jesus' name. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. It was not your, your doing, but it was your husband's doing uh, in the name of Jesus. And you come, you came in contact and you now have it. But the Lord says it's gone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whoo, praise the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you that you're the God of all this earth. We thank you, Lord, for manifesting your glory in the earth as the waters cover the sea. Thank you so much for being with me today. In Jesus' name, God bless you.